Welcome everybody to the Broken Ring Racing League GT3 Sprint Championship. This is Season 11, Round 2 here at uh, Monza. We are uh, 10 minutes 50 seconds remaining on practice. We're going into qualifying at uh, 9, 10 Eastern Standard Time. So we're almost there. Some interesting tidbits to share with everybody. So it's going over and kind of clocking some different drivers. It's focused on crashes, which there was one for a second. In the standings, we have uh, the Draft Punk Gold team of Peter Flanner and Elliot Burton leading the team championship over Bush's Baked Venus and the Pax Oceani Racing Nomads. Uh, with the count... The camp counselors of Jeff Koppel and Austin McGill in fourth, and Pax Oceani in the. Actually, this is a, a change. Uh, the. Where is it? Back Pax Oceani of JD Daniel and Matthew Baldwin. That was a difference there. And right now, if we go over, we have a driver of Peter Flanner, who, let's uh, see, see there in the front. And he is leading uh, practice right now with a 147.439. He's over, uh, he's just 0 .085, faster than uh, Landon Loy on his best. Nathan Graham, who was sitting in P4 for a while in practice, has put it into P3 over uh, Cody McIlwain. Uh, McIlwain? Uh, McIlwain. McIlwain. Yeah. Trying to say that five times fast. Trey Mistak in P5, who is going to be starting, which is not going to be qualifying. So, what we can see, he's doing 147s. Uh, and drivers from P1 to P13. Uh, uh, 12 have all done 137s. Then we get to the 148s from P13 onward down to P30. P13 to P30. And that's Blake Knave, who, if we go back on track, is actually there. He's in P30 with the final time in the 148s with the 148.985. Just outside of that range is Eric Rodriguez. Oof. It's a bit of a bender there for himself right now. Uh, we'll go on with somebody who's actually out there, though. Eddie A. Smith. Who, at the moment... Go over. And... You don't see him on my roster for some reason. That is an odd one. There he is. He is P29 in the pro standings that's just barely getting any points in that first round. But as I was saying, the 149s, starting with, oh, well, it was someone else, but there's Blake Knave in P30. He's still out there. Uh, oh, he still holds that one, for, uh, that P30 for that time, but it, then it goes to Eric Rodriguez in P31, down to P40 of Michael Nash. Giannis uh, Theophanopoulos. Uh, Theo Phanopoulos. Giannis Theophanopoulos. Uh, it was not sporting a, a, a very distinctive livery. I mean, it is distinct in a way. If you really want to get into it. That is a... That is just a bright white Corvette. Uh, nothing else to it. So if you see this on screen, very distinctive Giannis. 
the old Phenopolis. And then Craig Carroll also uh, also in P41 with the 140. Actually goes to P41, overtaking Giannis right there on that last lap we just did for Caffeine Global Motorsports, one of the league owners here. And then a few other drivers. Steve McAllister, his teammate out there in P43. Gareth Hamm, one of the Gare Bears, um, also out there. That is going to be the uh, old Gucci Gay, the Gucci Gare Bears. Gareth, Gareth Ham and Garen Han, and Gareth Ham just spun that right into the wall. What a rough one! But going back out there, we have um, some upsets still out there. Giancarlo Manetti Schliemann, who is in P6 right now. Um, but has been in practice putting in some really good laps. Uh, he's only P6, but during... And he hasn't actually ran long here. He's not even sure how many laps he's done. Actually, he's done 40 laps. So I'd say more than anyone else on the... Tr the I was thinking he hasn't done that at 41 now. So he's done a lot. He's practiced a lot. I've seen him in the pits as well, so... But out of all the runners here, Trey Mistak might be the only other driver that's close to him in terms of laps. Uh, he did pay, Trey did 36. Peter's done 33. Um, J.D. Daniels at 36. Nicholas Maz is out there with uh, 34. Jeff Koffold with uh, Honked Pass. I don't know if that's his. Go on the gyro here. Oh, that's one of the, uh, that's Garen, Garen Han of the old Gucci Gare Bears. It's quite the team name. Quite the, uh, livery as well. <laughs> And you know we can also see uh, Chris Stewart out here. He's in the uh, he's in the pit lane right now. But a driver who uh, I think he's had a, at least a couple seasons off, but is back racing here at Brooklyn Racing League, which is cool to see. One of the new teams, and I don't believe they're even on track right now. Is uh, just added is was it Blake Patterson? Ooh. That doesn't look good. What was that? That was e Eric, uh... Ah, uh, just got a little sloppy on there on the exit. Let's see that again. This is through a scary. I uh, really just... Yeah, ooh. That was kind of violent, you know? I didn't expect that. Fine. Ooh, a little wobbly on the uh, exit there. And yeah, that's... Yikes. Well. Let's hope he doesn't do that in a race. And we got two minutes in... Four seconds left to go. Landon Loy, who was the race winner for last for the round one, we didn't get an interview, uh, but that's all been sorted out as far as him being able to be interviewed this next coming time. He's hoping to have a promising uh, race here, so he can't be interviewed, um, and that, you know, talk about the last race. He's leading right now in the season 11 standings in P1 over Peter Flanner by just 10 points. Christopher Daniel, who's down in 12th, is P3. And JD Daniel in P9 in practice is uh, P4 in the team championship. And the driver... Oh, there it is. P8 in the 
in the, uh, the standings right now in practice of Jacob Simmons is P5 in the overall pro class. As practice is about to uh, end here, and we can see some drivers um, focus on crashing, and it always surprises you who it's going to go and look at. Uh, Marshall Scari, ooh, Cooper McCoy, and that is what. Uh, Curva Grande? I, I can't... Oh, that's uh, Parabolica, I think. I'd be wrong. I wasn't wrong. Cooper McCoy crossing the line with a little bit of style points, and that is a driver of Zhe Ming Sen. Uh, yeah. Out of shape there. And qualifying is about to start. This is uh, round two. And we are underway. And that is uh, John Carlo Manetti Schliemann out first. Uh, second, I should say, uh, to Peter Flanner. Chris Stewart, J.D. McDaniel, Andrew Korostecki also coming out well in hand. And, you know, kind of what you'd expect. You got a lot of these fast guys that really want to jump the, the gun real quick. When you enter the, uh, the right, uh, register for the race, I believe it just puts you right in the front of the pack with the box. So they all came in really early. So they knew where they had a stance on the for their uh, their box in qualifying. It's a trick some of them like to do. And how's it going, Jordan Groves? Let's see what Pax Oceani can do. They are sitting uh, John Javecki and Chris Daniel of the Pax Oceani Racing Mill Managers in P3 and with the Pro Pro class. And the um, backpacks, Oceani, of J.D. Daniel and Matthew Baldwin is sitting in P5 in the standings. As well as Eric ne uh, Neville, uh, Neville, Alex Othen of the Pax Oceani Origami Pirates in P8. So they're lit littered amongst the, uh, the grid. Who is that in the background, though? We're going to have Peter Flanner. Up in his first flying lap. And with eight minutes, three seconds to go, these are going to be everyone's first flying laps. We're expecting 147s out of the at least 13 of the drivers, if it's any indication like it was in practice. 13 drivers will hit the 147s. The majority of the grid will be in the 148s, and then just outside the uh, the 40s will be at least eight drivers in the 149s and the 150s, just right there. Not a whole lot of um, drop off. The drop off is 149s and 150s for the last eight or so drivers. So a very strong mid pack in the 148s. Race space is going to look like that as well. Maybe 148s, 149s out of those drivers. It looks like Peter Flanner is well connected through Lesmos 1 and 2. Now I'd say this is the one part, the Scari, where they can find themselves in a bit of trouble on entry on that first one. Because if you mess up the first one, you know, 8 and 9 aren't going to do any favors. We just saw in practice some people make that mistake. I think he's fine. And 
And he's got John Carlo Monday Schliemann, who's going to get a little bit of a draft from him. He is, he is only 0.9 behind him. So it, Peter wants to set, step, uh, stay in on that top step. And with the 147.7, he's going to have John Carlo behind him, who might overtake that spot. But he doesn't. He's actually two tenths slower. And then we'll go over. Alex Othin, he's about to cross the line. He's got Jacob Simmons ahead of him, and with all these drivers shaking him up the order, there's Jacob Simmons in P3. Where does Alex Othin go? To P4, the driver we're just looking at. And then even further, people are making things happen. Chris Stewart is out there, and he is in sector, uh, sector two going into sector two, going into Lesmo. So he has some time before we can see whether or not he's going to score something strong. Landon Lloyd, who has just gone into the first, but ooh, what's up with that? Oh, he is going to go back into the pits and start over. Landon Lloyd is a strong contender for one of the top three spots in this uh, contention here. So we will have to take a look to see what happens there. Nathan Graham, who's crossing the line, he's going to be a driver who was in the top five in practice. What can he do here? This might be his first flying lap. Is that did not connect with a, a lap time there. So we'll see. We have 28 drivers who have set times on the board, and then the rest have not. Where are we at? Tyler Anderson. It looks like he is in some traffic. There's a lot of drivers that are in some traffic there. He's P4. He's got a 148.1. That's a low 148, which we already know is going to be really strong in qualifying. But it's going to be only in the you know tens. We're going to see some evolution out of these drivers because 140. We saw 147s out of 13 drivers, and right now we only have one driver who's done that, and that is Peter Flanner. Every other driver is in the low 148s at the moment. What can Tyler Anderson do? He's got Brian, Brandon Renfro ahead of him. Give him a little bit of a toe. As he crosses the line, I think that's going to put him into P2 with a 148.015. John Carlo Minetti Schleeman in with, the, with a P3 still. And Christopher Daniels coming out. Cody uh, McIlwain, 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 uh, yes, I'm saying that right. He is in P2 with the 147.8. So what you got to do there is just put it into the uh, that time zone. Uh, Eric Neville, uh, Neville, 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 he's in Parabolica right now. What can he do? He was on an outlap. Now I think this is his inlap. Let's see if... Crosses the line to go P11 for the moment. No? There's two P11s. That was not a time on the board. Uh, so this is going to be his fast lap, I guess. That's so interesting. Uh, Landon Lloyd, the race winner. On round one, this is definitely going to be his first flying lap. He did go into the pits. He had to go all the way around. He's got maybe two laps to set something up. It's a disaster result for him if he can't figure uh, put this together because he was extremely strong in practice. Extremely strong in the last race. And with that said, Rodrigo Theory just goes to P6. 148 even. And I'll put up the uh, horizontal tracker to see what other drivers are doing further down the grid. Get more in interest going. Okay, like I said, only up to P35 right now do we have drivers that have set times on the board. And Landon Lloyd 
gets ahead of Jeff Coffold. Driver right now, if he crosses the line, is going to be in the top five if this is a legitimate lap. And he goes to P2. 147.8. Just one tenth off of uh, Peter Flanders' time. It's a strong result from him. Cody was just ahead. He's staying P3 at the moment. Tyler Anderson's still out there trying to fight back. Giancarlo Minetti Schleeman is out there trying to fight back. And Nicholas Massa goes to P12. Drew Bailey across the line for P15, uh, 25, going uh, faster on this last lap, overtaking some drivers there. And we have Jeff Coffold, who has not set a time on the board. He's got Landon Loy ahead of him. Uh, Jamin Xian has also not set a time on the board, but it looks like he might be able to this go around. He is on his flyer. And qualifying has ended. Anyone crossing the line is it. It's Trey Mistak, Steve McAllister, Craig Carroll, and Noah Hoskinson all starting from the back with no time on the board. What can Jamie do here? Puts himself ahead of Gareth Ham. Ooh. It's an interesting way to end the uh, the session for himself. And Cody McIlwain, uh, McIlwain, uh, takes P1 over Peter Flanner and London Loy with a 147.682. The upset for these drivers is Nathan Graham is in P4 at the moment. And that is it. I don't believe he's going to have a chance. It looks like Peter Flanner is still out there. Um, I don't know if he crossed the line. Oh, he's in, he's in Parabolica. This is possibly for the, uh, the top step. And he retakes it. Going .021 faster than Cody uh, McElwain. And Landon Loy can't respond. Nathan Graham is out there still Elliot Burton crosses the line to take P3 and John uh, John Carlo Minetti Schleeman stays P4 it's a good result for him John Javecki crosses the line to go to P13 so out of all these drivers only nine of them were able to get the 147s Christopher Daniel and P9 the last of that 147 drivers Nathan Graham, if he crossed the line before this ended, then maybe this is still going to be a legitimate lap. It said he had an off track on lap five. But he is out there. And if that was a legitimate lap, his lap time did not improve. He's still sitting in P6. And you know where the starting grid is for all the drivers in the uh, from P1 to P15. You can see that on the, uh, the side there. We're going to go over to P60, Nicholas Mazza. P17 is J.D. McDaniel. Trevor Bonesteel in P18. P19 is Rafael Santos. Uh, P20 uh, is Chris Lambeth. Chris Stewart in P21. Andrew Korstecki in P22. Uh, Kevin R. Uh, Mallard in P23. Dylan Maroney, 24. Drew Bailey, 25. Blake Nave in 26. Eddie A. Smith in 27. Brandon Renfro in 28. Uh, Michael Kostak in 29. Eric Ryder gives in 30. Eric uh, Neville in 31. Neville. Uh... 
is uh, Marshall uh, Scari. Uh, Terry Burks in 33. Eric Kuzman 34. Michael Oshins in 35. Gareth Hahn in 36. Michael Nash 37. Kyle Howe in 38. Cooper McCoy in 39. Giannis uh, Theo Theophanopoulos in 40. Jamin Jen in 41. Gareth ha Ham in 42, Trey Misak 43, Craig Carroll 44, Noah Hodgkinson 45, and Steve McAllister in 46, rounding out this grid. A little less than the uh, amount of drivers we had on the first round. But that's all right. Get a look from the helicopter view because we have the uh, draft punk gold in P1 and 3. It's going to be a, a good, good positions for these two drivers. They can really keep good pace for the, for the other drivers around them, use each other to uh, the team in order to manage. The drivers around them. You got uh, Cody um, McElwain, who is kind of a is kind of a an upset here because I he, driver did finish in the uh, the first race, and I'm not even sure where he uh, where he's at on that. P7 for him on that first race result. Uh, turn one chaos can happen. So we have a large grid going into that first area. Another um, interesting driver is Landon Loy is the second race with Broken Ring Racing League. The winner of round one. And Nathan Graham also P6 in the pro standings. New to the uh, Brooklyn Racing League. And here we go. Looks like Nathan Green's going to have a move here. So is... Ooh, they come together slightly. Uh, that was Elliot Burton. It drops down almost two positions. Now it's down to one position. And look at that in the background. That is chaos. As they did not go through turn one cleanly. And further back, we have drivers battling it out. And that is Jeff Coffold and Tyler Anderson holding it together. And Jeff staying ahead for the moment. And that chaos that ensued is kind of okay at the moment I don't know how to describe that one um ooh, and Elliot Burton goes down the order I don't know what happened there we got John Carlo Minetti Schliemann down one position at the start of this race Nathan Graham up two and is that Tyler Anderson going to try to make a move down the inside line he goes for it before the corner even ends there goes Tyler Anderson overtaking Jeff Koffel for P. P9. And it is still a bit of a snake. Everyone's still together. There's a little bit of a gap forming there from Tyler Anderson to Christopher Daniel. All these drivers now up in positive skates as Landon Loy is going to be the driver in P3 that is going to be kind of following suit with uh, Cody McElwain and Peter Flanner. Already a gaps formed of two, uh, 2.1 seconds. And Nathan Graham is going to take us with the P4 and P8. Possibly even P9. Uh, As Tyler Anderson looks to sure up that gap that is half a second, about six tenths. 
and Justin Scott through Curva Grande has got a good line on Trevor Bonesteel. And you can't even see it. There he is. The tender of Justin Scott. And just ahead of him is that um, Martini Livery, almost Martini Livery ish S. Trevor Bonesteel in the Porsche. still close together and is that damage on Chris Lambert he's down one position Kevin uh, uh, Millard Mallard is up three Elliot Burton now in P23 Up ahead is Nicholas Mazza who's in the uh, the Porsche there it's got Alex Othen behind as well as JD Daniel and 14 and 15 he's got two packs of Oceanis behind him one ahead of him with John Chebecki Landon Lloyd just setting the fastest lap still in P3 and we're going to go over to Rodrigo Theory who's got Jeff Koffel one tenth separating is he going to jump there Rodrigo being a part of the uh Draft Punk Silver in the leading AM driver over uh, Craig Carroll and Alex uh, Warkis. Nothing's changing just yet from those drivers. Christopher Daniel has Chris Tudling ahead of him. The only Mercedes on track, I believe. damage off some of these drivers cars and look at that Trey Mistak who's in that McLaren and he's got Cooper McCoy next to him in that in that Porsche just ahead of him who's that driver just ahead I think that's Noah Hodgkinson P38 is I am not sure but just ahead Eric Rodriguez Trying to make a move stick on Michael Oceans. Oceans, I should say. Oceans. Gets it done around the uh, the outside there and gets ahead. Now, which driver is that? That has the damage. It says 38. I think it's Noah Hoskinson. Car number 14, yeah. What would Michael uh, Kostick, who's sitting in P27 at the moment, he's got... Uh, that was Eddie A. Smith that he passed. And just ahead is Dylan Maroney and Blake Nave battling it out through uh, turns one and two. There was some chaos. For the board, we have Alex Othen, who is still behind Nicholas Mazza. And I mean, Nothing's changed so far out of these uh, drivers here. Nicholas has kept it where he needed to. Alex hasn't changed position. JD Daniel has gone up two positions. Nicholas Mass is up three, but he's got Pax Oceani sandwich around him. That's got to feel somewhat distressing. You know, these drivers are talking to each other in Discord. Got to wonder how are they going to uh, fight back. They're not definitely having John Chebecki try to hold them back a little bit. That would be uh, something probably not the case is happening at all with team orders like that, but they haven't really reeled them in. 
although it looks like JD Daniel has got some pace over no over his counterpart and he goes for the move as well as Nicholas Mazza goes for the move Nicholas Mazza gets it down at turn one John Trebecki gets past JD Daniel is now in suit across, uh, over Alex Otha and Chris Stewart now up ahead of Trevor Bonesteel up five positions looked like Trevor Bonesteel was trying to make a move there and was the one that lost out before turn one and now Christopher Daniel trying to make a move on uh, Christopher uh, Chris, Chris Chitterling a lot of Chris is out here and they just went a little snappy there is they're gonna hold it together through let's most almost went side by side in that one and he gets ahead and stays ahead that car was wobbly from Chris Chitterling the little lug nuts uh, racing of uh, you know Charles Weed and his respective teammate and that's two positions gained for the Mercedes AMG driver only one on the grid who's running that car and it looks like everyone's still relatively close together it rounds out with just the driver of I think that's Andrew Korostecki back there who's got a good distance to Blake Nay of 3.4 seconds and now we're gonna see the pace difference of all these drivers 148 8 is seemingly the pace that everyone is keeping at the moment Elliot Burton has got Chris Lambeth ahead, and yes, Chris Lambeth does have some damage on that front end. Is he going to try to make a move here? Yes, he is. Stemming the bleed from a lap two incident, and look at that, Justin Scott overtaking uh, Rafael Santos into turn two. And through Curva Grande, he's going to have to hold down on the outside line. Going into the inside line for the uh, next chicane coming up. And it looks like he is going to still have to battle this out. He is that orange and red uh, Ferrari. Look at that one, Rob. And ooh, a little out of shape for Rafael Santos hitting that curbing there. And that's going to give Kevin Millard... Uh, a chance there in the McLaren as well as everyone else around him. Draft Punk Racing of Elliot Burton. Chris Lambeth also having a move here. And it is going to go to Elliot Burton, I believe. He's just passed, almost passed uh, Rafael Santos going into this next corner. It's going to happen and he gets it down. And he is ahead. That's 17 positions. Lost. He's going to go down to 16, 15, 14. He's in a, a battle of attrition now, having lost out right there. And this is going to be Chris Lambeth overtaking Rafael Santos through um, Parabolica. It's all right. Of course, Stecky. Is he going to have the move down on Rafael Santos? And you know what? It rains. It pours. Because he's now being swept up by drivers all around him. And Rafael Santos is no slouch. He's a solid driver. He's just being caught up by these battles that are happening. And he is now having to defend against all of these quick drivers around him as well. And that's another position lost. I don't think he's going to throw it around. Maybe he will. We'll pop on and see what he's going to do. He did try to go for that on that outside. Uh, he did try to throw it that way, but Chris, Andrew Korsteki was was defensive. But through Lesmos, is he going to have the move? It is not over for Rafael Santos, who sticks it on the inside line of Lesmos 1. Is he going to hold it together through the second corner Ooh, and I believe they just touched brave going side by side and they might have just touched 
That's Blake Knaves. Uh, Uh, front bumper being discarded onto the racing line. Thankfully, it's his eye racing and it just goes away. Uh, Andrew Korsaki will try to pick up a position here. And probably do so against Eddie A. Smith, who's just side by side with him through Parabolica. But it's not over. We will play this back. I don't think it's over. We'll we'll look at it. Actually, we'll just look at it right now. We have Landon Loy, who's going for the move on Cody uh, McIlwain. And he does so. Outbreaking him and getting it in. And as they continue, is he going to hold it there? And we're only about 10 seconds behind on this right now. It looks like he's going to keep it together and hold it to the next chicane. And he's flashing him. And we go further, exiting Lesmos 2. Landon Loy overtakes Cody McIlwain. Keeps it together. And that is P2 for him at the moment. And we'll go over to Jeff Poffold, who looks like he has Christopher Daniel in his sights. Neither one of these drivers have ch uh, changed positions from the start of this race. Christopher Daniel started 9, Jeff started 10, and they are keeping it clean, keeping it honest. Have not had to make a move on anyone else. I don't think they've had the opportunity just yet. But further up, we have John Carlo Manetti Schlieben, who's only down one position at the start of this race, and he's only battling Nathan Graham, who's up to Porsche versus McLaren. P1 through 4 is McLaren's only. And Noah Hoskinson's towing right now, so something must have happened for his race. Unfortunate. Further back, we have Chris Stewart and John Javecki going at it. Chris Stewart taking that, uh, that inside line. Gets ahead of him, but does Trevor Bonesteel also make the move? He's going to go for it in the braking zone. Gets on the curbing and well enough tried to give some space. He gave some space, and John Javecki just lost two positions off of turn one. That technically was one. I think Chris Stewart had it down on the straight itself. That is no bueno. Going over to Rodrigo Theory, who hasn't gained or lost anything from the start of this race. A driver who should be in the pro class eventually. He's in the Draft Punk Silver team. Followed by his teammate of, uh, I think it's Eric Kuzman. Draft Punk Silver. Dylan Maroney. Sorry, Eric Kuzman. That's a different team he's on. I don't even think he's on a team. And it is uh, not up yet. What's impressive about Rodrigo Theory is he's leading the AM class uh, championship right now. He's sitting P12. What I can tell you is the drivers around him. So let's see. John Javecki gets ahead of... Trevor Bonesteel through turn one. John Javecki finding his stride, getting back out there. And further back, we have Blake Knave going side by side with Andrew Borstecki, as well as Brandon Renfro also getting uh, his nose into this. And Blake Knave's really not going to have a lot to uh, do here because he's missing that arrow on that front end, and it is going to make him slower naturally. Just, and it is not yet over 
Andrew Korosaki still having to make that move down into that second chicane. And look at that. Blake Nave not letting it go. He is still there, missing his front bumper and still insisting on trying to get ahead. What a great battle. He is not over. It's not over for him. And in the background, you can see Elliot Burton. Down 26 positions at the start of this race. It was 17. At some point. Why did that change? Garen Hahn. Also missing his uh, front end there. To be a theme with some of these drivers. Oh, Cooper McCoy missing his uh, rear. So you have some drivers that uh, <laughs> made contact in different scenarios. Rodrigo Theory. He's got Nicholas Mazza four tenths up on him. And both JD Daniel and Alex Offen behind. No moves yet. And you know, if I would have to suggest it would be a driver who's going to make a move, out of all of them, it's going to be JD Daniel on Rodrigo Theory. That's why he's down. Elliot Burton was only 17 positions down, but he and Justin Scott touched. And that puts him further down. Having pulled back a couple of those laps, uh, I mean, slap 12 or 25, he's still got a lot of it time left to make up some positions, but that is a rough, rough go with it. I'm trying to find a driver who's out there. We got Rodrigo Theory P12, the AM class leader right now. Everyone around him is a pro class driver. JD Daniel, Alex Othman, Chris Stewart, John Trevecki, Trevor Bonesteel, I believe it's in the uh, pro class. He is in the pro class. So you have to go further down the list there. I don't know. Ooh. Rafael Santos. What's that, Cooper McCoy? That was, um, was bizarre. I didn't think that was Cooper McCoy. It's Michael Nash, P28 there, with that uh, Marlboro livery. Very tasteful livery. I like that, that version of it. There's Brandon Renfro. I think that was Michael Kostak who he made contact with. That would make the most seeming sense there because that is the only black all black McLaren and in, in Brandon Renfro was in a Porsche and that was Andrew Korsteck that was ahead of them. That makes more sense. Landon Loy is in the pit lane. Peter Flanner is still out there on track, so now we're going to see the uh, the exchange between these drivers hitting. Alex Warkris is not in this race. 
Charles Whedon is, believe Charles Whedon is. Cooper McCoy goes in the pit lane. And I've been trying to do this for some, a while, but it's been difficult. There's still drivers out there that are battling it out. And we'll go over to one. J.D. Daniel has Rodrigo Theory a little bit closer this time this go around. We got Eric Koonsman, who's going to give way to one of those drivers. Through, I think that was Lesmos, too. And is now giving way to the next set of drivers. I feel like that's a little bit of a... Um, uh, and that is Chris Stewart, who also wants to get by, but he is not going to be able to do th so. Oh, he gets by. All right, he got by. We have Christopher Daniel, Tyler Anderson, Jacob Simmons in the Venus, Bush's big Venus livery there. Can never escape the beans. And Cody goes into the pit lane. All these drivers are going to stay out. Jacob Simmons holding position right now in P4. There goes Tyler Anderson going to go down the inside line. This is a um, Ford Mustang. Where's Ford Mustang? And then gets by. Tyler Anderson now up seven positions from the start of this race. We'll stay back on board. Charles Whedon, I believe, should be in this race somewhere. Charles Whedon. He is not in this race. So Rodrigo Theory is battling Cooper McCoy, technically speaking. And this is the uh, this is the difference here. Craig Carroll, who's sitting P39 at the moment, is in P2 in the AM Class Championship. Alex Warkris is not here, neither is Charles Whedon. Cooper McCoy is in P4 in the AM Class, and Cooper McCoy is ahead of Craig Carroll in P37. As Steve McAllister goes in the pit lane, Cooper McCoy is already pitted or already gone in the pit lane so I think his chances will change Landon Loy who's got Eddie A. Smith to clear and he does so uh, but out goes uh, Cody M uh, McElwain and he is ahead of Landon Loy so the pitch strategy for Landon on the undercut did not work and he's going to have to pass this driver again naturally like he did the other time now where is Peter Flanner he is in the pit lane and he looks a little off kilter there but where is Landon Loy and Cody Vickel let's see where they shape up they are down the straight but they are still a little bit too far back that is a full second that he's held himself, and that is going to be pulling back P1. We got the drivers ahead of him of Alex Othen, JD Daniel, Christopher Daniel, Jacob Simmons, and John Carlo Minetti Schleeman, who have not gone in the pit lane. Uh, Craig is adapting to his triple monitor setup. Triple monitor is really cool. Got to be an adjustment. And these drivers have yet to go in the pit lane. With that said, though, every other driver on the grid besides Michael, oh, Michael uh, Scari has gone in the pit lane. Now Cooper McCoy goes up. Now we're going to see the true difference. I wasn't aware that drivers were already going into the pit lane. So where Cooper McCoy was when I was talking about where he was wasn't true to the uh, the nature where he's at he's n not going to clear the drivers that are that are way up there in P1 through 5 but this is where he's at now P29 and he's P5 in the A class championship 
So he is P29. Craig Carroll is going to pull back some positions as well in P36. And they are fighting in the AM class title. Christopher Chittling is battling out with here with uh, Michael Oceans. And he's going to get by. And it looks like Chris Chitterling is down 25 positions, so he himself had an incident. And Landon Loy and Peter get ahead. Giancarlo Minetti Schlieven comes back out in the P4 ahead of Nathan Graham. And that is a uh, that is a move for him that worked because what he was doing was trying to uh, get ahead of Nathan Graham this entire time, and he has done so. Jacob Simmons battling it out with uh, Tyler Anderson and Christopher Daniel. Let's go John. John Javecki is in P15 right now. He's got a uh, a little bit of a, a difference to uh, uh, Rodrigo Theory and Trevor Bonesteel. I believe he's just been in a sandwich with them for a while now. Even post. And maybe this is over for now. Take a look here at Andrew Korostecki. Might have a move on Justin Scott. So the two dri or so the two drivers in three and four in the AM class are not here. But Cooper McCoy is. Eric Koonsman, Eric Rodriguez are also here. Eric Rodriguez. Um actually when I'm looking at it. Eric Rodriguez is in P41 at the moment, and he's going into the pit lane. Uh, Eric Koonsman of the... I want to get this right. Uh, Eric Koonsman is in the... It is... The... It is... I, don't, I guess it's just it's, uh, the Bean Assassin. I don't know if he's on a team. It doesn't say... But he's also in the A-class battle here. Back over to Andrew Corsecki, who still looks to be fighting this out. And... We'll go back over to Landon Lowell here. Chris Lambeth is making a move here on Kevin uh, Mallard, getting ahead for uh, P17. And is Kevin Mallard going to fight it back? We'll pop over. Solid move for Chris Lambeth at the moment. Pulling back over. We'll go over to Christopher Daniel, who has. Tyler Anderson ahead of him. All he sees is Valhalla. This battle has been on since the start of this race and even after the pit, uh, the pit stops. They are really showing some pace. From Peter Flanner to P15, and P or Peter Flanner to P1 to P15, John Javecki, 24 second difference. It's got Cody uh, McElwain, who's half a second McElwain. Uh, half a second off of him, as well as Landon Loy, who's nine se uh, tenths. Peter Feiner sets the fastest lap, though, and that is the fastest overall lap. And for my AM class talk with Rodrigo Theory, in who's sitting in P14 at the moment, and it looks like he's got no one really around him. He's got John Javecki's 1.1 seconds back. He's got a 2.5 second difference, Alex Offen. So Alex Offen has passed him at some point in this race. John Javecki has had gotten ahead of Trevor Bonesteel. We witnessed that in the race. But a really overall strong driver in the AM class who is way... He's sitting in P14. And the drivers in the, the battle for the championship, I mean, he's got... He's, they got a lot of uh, positions to climb to get close to this driver. I think uh, a 
promotion is definitely going to be in order for a next uh, next season for this driver. What a f fantastic result he's still having. It's Nicholas Mazza and Chris Stewart are next to each other at the moment. And they're sporting the same livery. Different cars. And I don't think they're on a team. Sim City Racing? I don't have them down on my own notes as them being a team, but there goes through Chris Stewart on Nicholas Mazza. And they were part of a team that's posted here of Sim City Racing. Maybe some team orders were in order there. He gets a nice little toe off of his uh, teammate there, possible teammate. Um, we go over to Kevin uh, Millard, who's uh, in P18, who's still behind uh, Chris Lambeth, who overtook him a few laps ago. But keeping in pace, that 148.728, that is a very impressive lap time to be just that far of a difference to uh, Chris Lambeth ahead of him. With that said, who are the drivers who have made some impressive overtake moves here? It's, uh, it's going to be uh, Trey Mistak, up 18 positions since the start of this race. Up 17. Possibly 18. I think our... Oh, yeah. Drivers who are just going to be in the pit box. Elliot Burton, Justin Scott, Andrew Korstecki, Noah Hodgkinson. It's unfortunate. Uh, something must have happened there. Wait, what happened to Mr. Burton? Elliot Burton is in the pit lane. Um, what I can't say happened. Uh, we'll go over to Tyler Anderson, who's battling uh, uh, Christopher Daniel for P7. What did happen previously is on lap one, at a Curva Grande, he's uh, just at the start of it actually on turn three. He's uh, not into a wall, but into the sand, uh, the sand trap there. Then gets into a another incident with uh, Justin Scott, I believe through the second chicane which put him he was up he went down a bunch of positions clawed back 70 uh clawed back to only be down 70 positions had that incident in the second chicane went back down to 28 positions lost and then must have had another incident after that one because it is yeah that's And Landon Loy, who by all accounts has put on the sim, uh, uh, the sim motion, the sim motion uh, adverts on his on his uh, McLaren there. But I've refreshed this uh, a number of times, and it is not actually refreshing his livery. Um, Nothing is really different besides that he put on the uh, what was necessary to put on. Uh, what was required by the league. It's just not showing up. And he did state that he forgot to upload it to Trading Paints. I and mean, then he uploaded it during practice. So that is anyone's guess. And Cody uh, McElwain, McElwain trying to have a go here at Peter Flanner who went defensive. And these with five laps to go, these three drivers are going to be held together like glue. Only a couple tenths to separate each one of them right now.
And we'll take a look at this. Ooh, that was actually the first one. This was lap one. That was the first one that occurred on Elliot Burton. And then Elliot Burton and uh, Justin Scott. I guess came that was the second one back live with Landon Moy who's still chasing down Cody uh, McElwain no other recorded incident that showed that Elliot Burton might have crashed may have just put himself in the pit lane and called it there and Tyler Anderson was in the uh was in the top runnings there as well and he is dropped down take a look at that Oof. that is uh, the the bean assassin of Eric Koonsman oh and that is truly net code if you saw that the second time, there was a gap. There was a big gap. So we're going board with John Trevecki. He's now closer than he's ever been to uh, Trevor Bonesteel. And he's got Rodrigo Theory behind him. Who's definitely lost out because Rodrigo was ahead of both these drivers. We're Lambeth in the background. Up four positions looking to try to yeah that's four seconds back though uh, four laps to go he's got to put in some really strong numbers if he wants to get closer to this fight ahead of him Steve McAllister letting these drivers by very safely a little bit of damage there on the on the front end for Steve Kathy Motors Global Motorsports And is John Chavecki in the... Is he going to make a move here during Paravaca? No, he's probably going to wait for turn one. A lot of drivers have gotten it down there. But the difference between the Corvette and the Porsche and that McLaren that's just behind of Rodrigo Fury, he is not really reeling him in quick enough. He even steps out already. But by the time we're here at the uh, the 150, there's not much they're gonna do. Or make any commitment there. It's a slight poke to the inside to let him know he might sniff it out and go for it, but he doesn't. Eddie A. Smith, who's got uh, Michael Kostak ahead of him, is he gonna make a move here? P23, who no, doesn't? He's got Trey Mistak ahead of him as well as. Cossack and that black McLaren. It's McLaren, McLaren, McLaren ahead of him. And he's singing his Ford Mustang. With Brandon Renfro behind. A four tenths difference. No change in the order just yet. Now this is odd. Landon Loy is in P4. John Carly Manetti Schliemann is going to inherit a podium with two laps to go. What by chance happened with this? Um Oh, 
Okay, so he was ahead in P3 at this point. But on my screen, it didn't look like there was any, uh... Like he was getting passed by anything. By, or by another driver, I should say. Pulling ahead, pulling ahead. Nothing. The mysteries of the universe will not be solved here. Ooh. Well, that's live. Jaming Jen. People we'll just call him Jen, uh, James. P36 behind. Also has a little bit of a... Scuff there on the front end. A lot of drivers have shown some some battle scars from this race here at Monza. Now down 2.3 positions. It's the final lap. That's unfortunate. Um, and there's going to be no difference there. We're going to go over with Kevin uh, Millard, who is neck and neck. through Parabolica with uh, Chris Lambeth and this is going to be a battle to the end I believe and that's unfortunate for Landon Loy who is having a strong race and that was I got ahead of Cody in the first stint got behind him in the second now he's lost out to John Carlo there Kevin Millard gets ahead here. Is he going to continue to stay ahead, though? That's the real question. And they're going to go side by side. And Chris Lambeth is battling it out. He's not going to want to give up this position. As they are going to take this into Lesmos 1. Maybe go side by side. They do go side by side. Hang it around the outside. Chris Lambeth is not letting it go. And into Lesmos 2 they go. Ooh, and they it looks like they bang a little bit, but not that bad. He gets ahead of him. I believe that's going to be it for now. Peter Flanner is going to cross the line to take P1 from Cody uh, McElwain. He takes P2. John Carlin and Schlieben takes P3. Landon Loy in four, Nathan Graham in five, Jacob Simmons in six, Christopher Daniel in seven, Jeff Koffold is going to finish up ahead here. We'll see in eight, JD Daniel in nine, Chris Stewart in ten, Nicholas Mazza in eleven, Alex Othen is going to take P12, Trevor Bonesteel into P13, John Javecki 14, Rodrigo Theory 15, Chris Lambeth in 16, over. Kevin Millard. Is it done? It's over the line. He takes P16 over Kevin Millard in 17. Drew Bailey in 18. Dylan Maroney in 19. Tyler Anderson in 20. Trey Mistak in 21. Michael Kosak 22. Eddie A. Smith in 23. Over Blake Nave across the line in 24. Brendan Renfro in 25. Rafael Santos who had a really strong race Really battling out a lot of drivers there in P26. Cooper McCoy, P27 for him. Kyle Howe over Michael Nash across the line here for P28 and 29 for Nash. Michael Oceans in 30. Chris Schitterling in 31. Garen Hahn of the old Gucci Gare Bears in 32. Craig Carroll in 33. Uh, Marshall uh, Scari in. 34 Terry Burks Terry Bur Burks that was the the colorful livery I was looking at earlier thinking who is that uh, what a nice finish there uh, Gareth Ham into 40 now drivers not mentioned that have already gone in the that passes uh, Jamie Jen in 36 Eric Rodriguez 37 Eric Koonsman 38 
uh, Steve McAllister, 39. And uh, Gareth Hammond, 40. Elliot Burton, 41. Justin Scott, 42. Andrew Gore, second, 43. And that pretty much sums it up. Um, we'll go over and see if there's any drivers. Got Peter Flanner here. Peter Flanner, uh, what a fantastic race for yourself. Uh, congratulations on the P1 finish there. Um, what a result. I mean, you had two really fast drivers behind you. Was that uh, was that at all um, pressuring throughout that race? Yeah, for sure. It was pressure throughout the whole race. They were close enough where it was a race between the three of us almost the entire race. Um, I was staring at the gap the entire time. And being in front at Monza, I think, is a little bit of a disadvantage because um, the draft is so powerful. So uh, I was worried that they were going to pass me in the pits because they were saving more fuel. But luckily, I came out in front. Yeah, I mean, you did. You you came out of 1.1 seconds ahead. I know that Cody uh, Mackle, Mackle Ale Wayne, uh got uh, overcut um, Landon Loy there. And then I'm not even sure what happened to Landon Loy, but he went back a, a spot um, even further back. He, but um, I think having them battling it out kind of helped you a little bit. Uh, definitely saved you from having to... I mean, you did defend a, a lot. We saw that early on. They were stuck with you for most of that first stint. Second stint was a little different because Landon Doy pits uh, opposite of both of you guys, you and Cody. So, uh, as well as Cody pitting on his own. So, what a difference. Um, fantastic result. I think this will give you a good addition to be in the uh, standings here, in the pro standings. You're going to be P1. Uh, what are you going to take from this going in forward? Have you learned anything from Cody because he's new? Actually, both drivers of Landon Loy and Cody are new to this league. Did you learn anything about their, their racing style? Uh, well, I really hope that they would have been fighting behind me a little bit more. So I guess I learned that uh, they're both smart. They both knew that if we all stuck together to the end, it would be a race. So look out for that in the future. Absolutely. Um Fantastic result. Uh, also, it's unfortunate what happened to your teammate. Um, we did see he had a couple, couple incidents. Um, both, both of them, not so great. Um, especially the one off the opening lap. You know, just being uh, just losing right there on the uh, entry of turn three. Unfortunate for him. But you know, you guys are gonna you know you guys have these things happen to you uh, every season. You know, the draft punk racing is still probably gonna be in the lead here for uh, the team standings as well. I, I hope the best for you guys, and you know, once again, congratulations, uh, Peter. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jason. Yeah, cheers. And over. Uh, Cody uh, McIl McIlwain, uh, congratulations on your P2 finish. It looked like a very hard battle. Um, yep. You were battling out Landon Loy. You were really putting, you know, some good pressure onto Peter Flanner, who was sitting in P P1. Um, what was the uh, what was the difference there in your pit stop strategy? Because it was only a one, it was only like a one second difference from you to Landon Loy. But how did you really catch him? Did you just have better, uh, like a better outlap? I'm not sure. Um, I just tried to, you know, when the race started and we all kind of fell in line, I just uh, decided to just save fuel, you know, so I'd have a shorter pit stop. And uh, I, I did have a good uh, in lap and out lap. Uh, I, I don't know if that was some of the difference, too, but I feel like it was probably more of the fuel saving. And yeah, I mean, I didn't have anything for Peter, man, unless he made a mistake. You know, I, I wasn't going to send some crazy dive bomb on him or anything. So he was going to be really hard to pass either way, even before the lap car got there between us. But uh, it was a good race. Uh, good racing with him and Landon. Uh, I kind of messed Landon up. I, I kind of – I didn't give him quite enough room, and uh, I'd like to shout out to him and apologize for that. But uh, other than that, man, it was a great race, and uh, I'd like to shout out all the other guys that finished up front. It was a good time. Yeah, well, thank you for saying so. Um, so it, 
exactly. So you just you and Landon came together. Is that why he ended up yep. going behind uh, John Carlo there? Uh, I, honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, I would imagine so. Uh, I don't know if he got any damage or any, it was it was light contact, but he ended up kind of in the grass and uh, slid through the corner. And uh, uh, okay, like I, said, I, I, I don't I don't know if he got any damage or not. Uh, I thought he had come back on track ahead, but uh, like I say, he may have had damage. I'm not sure. Definitely not sure there either. I did see him go into, um, after Scar, he kind of hit one of the walls there, but it was towards the end and he was already behind John Carlo at that point. So, uh, fantastic result for yourself. I mean, you had a great result in, you know, top 10 finish in the first race. Uh, you're new to the series. Uh, congratulations. Uh, really great race craft, by the way. Um, I thought you did really well, really strong, fast driver, you know, putting some real pressure on other fast drivers around you. Uh, thank you for joining me, man. And uh, go- can't wait to see what you do in the next one. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Yeah. And John Carlo Manetti Schliemann. Hey, how's it going? Pretty well. I hope you're doing well. You kind of, I'm not going to say gifted P3, but uh, I, I'm kind of curious. How did that go? Uh, all go about? Because you're behind Landon Loy. Uh, you did get ahead of, uh, who's that, Nathan uh nathan graham i believe is his name uh yeah yeah nathan graham you, you just had a good pit stop which got a, you got ahead of him because you were behind him and i was seeing that you were trying to make something happen there and so you went in to go for the undercut the undercut worked for you there and then it kind of put you closer to the the, the top four drivers what got you uh i mean you were the fourth driver up there but what got you closer to p3 and how did you end up getting past landon lloyd yeah, I was I was able to save a bit of fuel behind Nathan, so I was able to just get get out ahead of him in the pits. But it, I mean, as you said, it was it was gifted. Um, really, it was just back markers. Um, unfortunately, getting in the middle of of that top three, and I think I think Landon and and one of them had a bit of contact or a, a, an issue, um, and I was able to get up there. And then Landon was still up behind me, and I was scared. And and another back marker i think him and they got together again in ascari um so it was just uh, uh okay it was kind of just like it just keeps swimming from <laughs> from finding nemo for me um and it ended up paying off gotcha okay so i had some thought that that was it and uh, you know uh cody uh, mackle mackle wayne said that they also uh, came together at one point he went off into the grass and slid through one of the corners because of that contact light contact but he's uh you know he did show some 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 acknowledgement there that they did make contact that might have had played a little bit of, into it but you know other other back markers uh, being involved also that also plays into it so i mean what a what a great finish for you um this is going to put better results for you on the table you've you've won before um did you learn anything from the um, Nathan? He is new to the the group, new to the the league. Um, he seemed to have you. He kind of seemed to have your number there for a little bit during that first stint. Yeah, he was he was very quick. Um, I honestly like in a straight line. The McLarens were were unbeatable. I think the Porsche here was by far the the worst choice in a straight line, which is what you need at Monza. But hope I you know I had to take the Take take the L for this race to hopefully make it back in others where the Porsche is, is a bit more strong. So hopefully we'll we'll be able to fight up there with Peter and and them for the top step in future races. Well, I can't wait to see it. Uh, thank you for joining me, John Carlo, and you know once again, congrats on P three. Thanks, Jason. Have a good one. Yep. See you. And Rodrigo Theory, uh, thank you for joining me. The AM class uh, winner by a by a country mile there i mean i your two competitors that are in p3 uh, p2 and p3 didn't even show up for this race and then you have um one of the the owners who also put in a fantastic performance of his own uh was just further down at some point they sh- i mean you're gonna get promoted but it's you're walking away with the championship right now yeah yeah um it's uh I mean, at this point, I'm just focusing on trying to keep up with the fast guys and uh, learning as much as I can from them. So it's it's kind of just focusing up to the, the future now at this point. Yeah. I mean, you have Pax Oceani 
uh, all around you. The, you know, the drivers were, you know, either in front of you or behind you. You had uh, a couple other ones that were in the mix um, that weren't Pax Oceani, but like, you know, other other types of drivers where you're like, um, the likes of Trevor Bonesteel, uh, Nicholas Mazza, you know, towards the end, Chris Lambeth and Kevin uh, Mal uh, Millard was um, also coming into play. Were you ever worried about them or did you feel that that gap was significant? Uh, no, no, I was not really too worried about them. My my biggest worry, honestly, is like the the very consistent driver, uh, John Javicki. He's just always, we always end up... Uh, somewhere close to each other towards the end and it's always a tight little race so it always makes it very exciting yeah i mean it was a fantastic race for you i we you got good coverage so don't don't be afraid to go look and see how you were doing uh some great praise out of me you know i was afraid that I, if i kept saying nice things about you you would you would bend it but you, you know you had a great strong race uh you didn't really do too bad you qualified a couple positions higher and then you just lost three i mean ultimately that's still a great result considering the fact i mean you had drivers some fast drivers that kind of peeled their way through the pack on you know with whatever they qualified on i just think they had a, a really great uh, really great pit stop and i think i lost about two seconds on that so pretty sure i lost a little bit there and then just a few mistakes of my own and the, the slowdowns in monza are very brutal just kills your entire momentum for the next corner so it's just easy to lose a lot of time very quickly uh you know you only had a one-tenth difference uh in a pit stop on john javecki and uh trevor bone seals was actually slower than yours by four tenths so mm -hmm. i'm not sure maybe maybe that is the case but uh maybe you just have to practice dialing in your pit stops for you know the next couple races and see if that helps you uh evolve there yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, yeah, the, the main part is like for me losing the the front pack very early on was uh, was tough, and just getting a slowdown didn't help it. Yeah, uh, I mean, and then uh, mm -hmm. John passing in a little bit later was uh, quite a heck of a move, and I'm surprised we all came out alive. But that was uh, a bit of a cluster, but nothing happened thankfully. But I left the door open. I learned my lesson, and. Uh, Hopefully do better from that. <laughs> hey, at least you're learning something from this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, congratulations on that AM class uh, win. And uh, can't wait to see if you're going to be uh, doing it again for a, you know, a triple header there. Uh, get that third one uh, win in. Thanks for joining me, Rodrigo. All righty. Thank you, Jason. See you later. That is it, folks. And uh, thank you, Loy Boy 2 Gaming, for the... Uh, the follow appreciate that and everybody else this uh race is over this was the round uh round two at monza for season 11 of the gt3 sprint championship here at broken ring racing lane sponsored by sim motion and details will be provided on that sort of sponsorship later uh as we progress through this series uh catch us next sunday as well as watch out for our super formulas and our nascar and our v's versus rays throughout this week and join us on the discord thanks again and have a good night everybody